The Supernatural Book, Episode 6, Satan's Counterfeit Race. Up there on the third heaven, sitting on the most magnificent throne in the history of kings, sat the Ancient of Days. He was surrounded by cherubim, by seraphim, by the angels, and other beings we don't even know about. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the Lord sees every sinful activity going on in the universe. It says in Proverbs 15, 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Evil men and seducers were waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, focused on the temporal. What happened was one day... The devil was up there in the second heaven and he was coming up with another plan to attack the seed. You know, he attacked Abel, got him killed. The Lord had a solution for that. You know, he's constantly thinking of a way, how can I attack this seed? You know, that seed's going to bruise my head. And the devil approached some of those sons of God. Possibly ones that hadn't even fell yet. And the devil tempted them into taking on flesh. He said to those heavenly beings, just look at those human women down there. Don't they look good? I mean, I've, I've got them running around now with hardly any clothes on. I mean, none of their husbands are manning up. They're, they're all about half women themselves. And, you know, Paul's going to write one day that the women ought to have power on their head because of the angels. And none of them got that. Why don't you just go down and pick you out a bride? And they probably said, you know, what are you talking about, man? Don't you know that the angels in heaven are neither married nor are given in marriage? Well, guys, obviously, but you have to leave your first estate, leave your, leave your own habitation. Then you'll no longer be the angels of God in heaven, you see. Just look at those women down there. Look, Lucifer, if we do that, the Lord will charge us with folly. Come on, you sons of God. A little bit of fun every now and then won't hurt. Everybody's doing it. Just one time ain't going to kill you. And so they did. Didn't take much. Uh, in Genesis 6, 4, it says, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. You see, those sons of God, those angels, saw the daughters of men. And they went down and had children by them. This created Satan's counterfeit race. An army of wickedness. They were mighty men. The offspring of the angels and women were giants. And he was wanting something like universal soldiers to take over. He not only wanted to attack the seed, he wanted to keep his crown. And he's already knocked the crown off the head of Adam. And he's not letting his guard down on these mortals again. These angels that fell and took women, they were blinded to the fact that there is no good deal with the devil. He doesn't give good advice. He just promotes the pleasure of sin for a season, but then your season ends. And those angels that sin would end up dying like mortals. And the Lord told them in Psalm 82, 6 through 7, it hadn't been written yet, but the Lord probably told them, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. All they did was enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. The wickedness of man was great in the earth, especially when the offspring of the sons of God got older. This was just another satanic attack on the seed. The devil wanted to corrupt the gene pool so that he promised, so that the promised seed wouldn't be born. And one problem for the devil, though, the Lord always has a man. He's always got a man. You see, there was a just man on earth who was perfect in his generations. His generations. Genesis 6, 9 says. His name was Noah. He was in the midst of a crooked perverse nation and shining as a light in the world. He came out from among them and was separate. He wasn't conformed to this world, but he was transformed by the renewing of his mind. He was perfect in his generations his genes hadn't been corrupted by the mixed marriages that was going on between those sons of god and daughters of men you see this world was shockingly evil and wicked 
And I'm sure every town had it legal to do just about anything they wanted. Gambling, marijuana, whorehouses, psychedelic drugs, the dark web was the regular web. Uh, the black market was the corner market. You know, stuff like that. God saw that wickedness of man was great in the earth, so anybody who did righteously stuck out like a sore thumb, and that sore thumb was Noah. He was a real character. Most, pro most people probably wouldn't even believe he was real until they saw him with their own eyes. He was literally a different breed. I mean, think about it. The whole earth had been corrupted by these mixed marriages, except for Noah and his people. They were literally a different breed. They thought he was strange because he ran not to the same excess of riot, and they spoke evil of him. They were constantly telling. They're constantly saying, Noah, much learning doth make thee mad. Well, Noah couldn't help that he walked with God for hundreds of years. I mean, you're bound to learn something in that amount of time. But they thought he was mad. They're like, much learning doth make thee mad, Noah. But it says in Genesis 6, 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. A lot of people picture Noah as this old looking guy who walks around with a cane and talks like this or something. I don't believe that because look at the condition of the earth before the flood, right? Genesis six twelve through 13, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. You see, the earth was corrupt. It was messed up. It was looking bad. Now, I'm going to give you some speculation here. Hope you don't mind me speculating just for fun on a rainy day. But think about this. If Noah was the only righteous man alive then you would have corrupt men running everything and doing what was right in their own eyes. And I'm just speculating. But I see Noah as a rough character that had guns in the shed, swords in the basement, uh, nunchucks, switchblades, brass knuckles, and played dirty in a fight. You know, pulled hair, kicked below the belt, throat punches, stuff like that. Like I said, I'm just speculating, but I see Noah wearing a, a worn-out trucker hat with a long beard, Something like Aaron's beard that says it went down to the skirts of his garments in Psalm 133, 2. And I picture Noah in steel-toed boots, jeans with holes that didn't come that way from the factory. He was just a worker with a plaid shirt and scarred up arms from working. I see someone that gets up every morning, looks out the window, and hates what he sees. He's constantly having to look over his shoulder. His phone always had another amber alert. He sees sex trafficking rings, drug deals, drive-bys, and he's always packing because he knows someone can run up on him any time, and a big someone at that. Job sixteen fourteen said, He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant, and there was giants in the earth in those days when Noah was walking around. I guess Noah was an average sized guy, but he was still like, you know, little people in a big world. You know why? Because there were giants in the earth in those days. He was the little man in the big world. Either God had a supernatural head hedge around Noah to where nobody messed with him, or he was just a rough character that really wasn't worth messing with, or better yet, both. I'd say Noah pl uh, prayed such a hedge around his house that any giant, fallen angel, or Jehovah's Witness would get zapped like a dog trying to cross an electric fence if they even came close to where he lived. Uh, one day, Noah was probably out working, you know, occupying till the Lord comes, and he might have popped in Enoch's famous sermon on cassette and got charged off of it. Getting charged off a of hand, behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. He probably wore that cassette tape out. And since Enoch was his great-grandpa, he might have had his journal. He didn't have a written word of God yet, but most likely would have had a good account of history since his great-great great great granddaddy adam fell in the garden and i imagine that writings had gotten passed down from father to son from son to the next son from son to the next son and so on also you have to take into consideration that noah's grandpa was methuselah 
And Methuselah was so old that he was walking the earth at the same time that Adam's heart was still ticking. That's pretty amazing. And these guys would have known some things. They may not have known as much about the scriptures as someone like Paul and the apostle John, but they would have had a familiarity with God and the spirit world that we just don't have today. The knowledge, the knowledge Noah had would have been enough to be a premillennial creationist because his granddaddy was. So anytime one of those giants got on TV claiming they were bringing in world peace with this one world government, Noah would have said, this is all, this is all baloney. And he wouldn't have believed it for a second. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came on the earth. So he was in his 400s when he received the prophecy from the Lord about the coming flood. But yeah, Noah was probably out there one day occupying till the Lord comes. He was probably out there working with his own hands because you know if any man provide not for his own, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And all of a sudden, Noah heard something like thunder. At first he thought maybe it was one of those T-Rexes or one of those giant pride rallies. But then he's like, no, no, this is, this is holy. And he began to hear something that sounded like the voice of many waters. And it said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And Noah, being the Bible believer that he is, believed the Lord. So Noah realized the Lord is talking to him just like he talked to Enoch, just like he had read about in the journal, if he had one. I'm just speculating. So do you know what Noah did? Genesis 6.22, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. The only thing Noah was really afraid of was God himself. It says in Hebrews eleven seven By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Noah said, Ham, Shem, Japheth, that was his three sons, start gathering up gopher wood. Or like, Huh? What's gopher wood, Dad? It's wood that you go for when your dad says so. Don't you know that if you honor your father and mother that your days will be long upon the earth? So get with it. Uh, Noah started building, started the building program immediately. Noah had just been walking with God and God dropped down a piece of the sword. Just a piece of this sword would help him against the walls of the devil. That's all he had was a little piece. The sword is obviously in the form of words from God. And the words of the Lord to Noah was, The earth is filled with violence. Through them, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. That was his sword. That was the key. That word was the key to not ending up like the sinful world. Noah possessed the greatest thing on the planet. It wasn't the ark. It was the piece of the sword that you've been hearing about through all these episodes imagine the street preaching adventures of noah and keep in mind that it had never rained before a mist had been coming up from the earth to water the whole face of the ground genesis 2 6 says noah was going around preaching that water was going to fall from the sky and everybody would have thought he was ready for the insane asylum yet noah was in an insane asylum that was run by the inmates those giants noah and his family were the only sane ones it doesn't seem Noah had one convert. I mean, he might have almost persuaded them to get on the ark. He might have put some, some under conviction about the wrath of God being a real thing. But it isn't all about how many converts you get anyway. It's about how much truth you're putting out there. Noah may not have had many souls under his belt, but he's still in high regard with the Lord. And Second Peter 2 5 says he's a preacher of righteousness. So imagine Noah out there preaching on the street 120 years. Get right with God. The rain is coming. <laughs>